I am doing this review without taking into consideration the type of the registration the specific chemical compound is a subject for, whether it is marketed and sold as a supplement or a medicinal drug. Hence, the first compound on the longevity list is the drug that has been used for over 60 years as the first line therapeutic product for treatment of the type 2 diabetes, the metformin. 83.6% of type 2 diabetic individuals in UK use this drug, while in the United States metformin was the eighth most commonly prescribed drug consistently from 2008 until 2012 and the number of prescriptions is over 60 millions per year. The main reason why this drug in diabetes is because it is effective in controlling the blood glucose level, safe, has no short or long-term side effects, carries no risk of hypoglycemia, does not cause weight gain and is very affordable all over the world. This drug almost does not carry risk of lactic acidosis and can be used even in patients with mild and moderate chronic kidney disease. Apart from being useful in controlling blood sugar, the UK prospective diabetes study has found out that metformin reduces the occurrence of the macrovascular disease, meaning it reduces the atherosclerotic narrowing of the blood vessels that often leads to gangrenes and amputations or vascular bypass surgery. In type 1 diabetes patients, adding metformin to insulin allows to reduce the dosage of insulin, helps to control weight and avoid weight gain associated with insulin therapy and provide a better control over the LDL, the bad cholesterol levels. In PCOS, Metformin was found to be effective in management of the polycystic ovarian syndrome. It can be used even in pregnancy, does not increase congenital malformations or miscarriages, and it was found effective in reducing the rates of severe hypoglycemia and weight gain in pregnant women. With all that said, my personal fascination with this drug is nourished by its recently discovered properties and mechanisms of action on the subcellular level. Metformin is the AMPK activator, adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase, a gene that encodes the enzyme which is regulating lipid and protein metabolism. It serves as an energy sensor and based on the ratio of the AMP to ATP, it operates as a master switch of the metabolism inside the cell. When AMPK is activated, it inhibits anabolism, promotes catabolism, it minimizes energy consumption by the cell and increases production of ATP. The AMPK system switches on under the conditions of low energy supply to the cell, lack of nutrients, stress, and mitochondrial insults. Through its activation, AMPK inhibits other anabolic genes, especially mTOR. mTOR is responsible for cell growth, proliferation, protein, protein synthesis. Those things are needed for the young growing organism. Testosterone and anabolic steroids upregulate this gene. On the other hand, cancers are associated with upregulation of mTOR as well. And by the way, the number of epidemiological studies has shown that reduction in cancer risk among type 2 diabetes patients after use of metformin is from 20 to 94 percent. A national health survey done in Taiwan on 16,000 patients concluded that 88 
there's an 88% reduction in the risk of various forms of cancer after treatment with metformin. A large study in the United Kingdom involving 60,000 patients demonstrated reduction of occurrence of colorectal and pancreatic cancers in those who use metformin. A 10 years long Zodiac trial has shown reduction of death rate from cancer in diabetic patients who were taking metformin. A mild study, metformin in longevity, is initiated with the purpose to evaluate anti-aging properties of metformin in humans. This study hypothesized, hypothesis was uh, based on the discovery that metformin was capable of extending the average lifespan of the experimental model on nematodes by 40%, however, without the extending the maximum lifespan. Incredible, isn't it? For your information, even the person whom you are listening to now was cycling on this drug for quite some time. But I'll tell you that story on the other occasion, not today. So, should we all take it? Well, it depends on the case. 20 years ago, Xavier Laverne made a discovery that metformin selectively inhibits the mitochondrial respiration, respiratory chain complex 1, which in its turn leads to decreased NAD oxidation, reduces membrane potential across the in a mitochondrial membrane and reduces oxygen consumption rate. It also reduces inflammation, one of the hallmarks of aging, and chronic systemic low-grade inflammation. Yes, it is sort of good for longevity and reduces risk of cancer, but it's sort of opposite effect on performance. Simply speaking, because it inhibits mitochondrial function, it becomes counterproductive against performance status and training capacity. Metformin activates sirtuins that participate in DNA repair. That's just great, fantastic. But in the same time, metformin reduces gains from resistance training. It inhibits lean muscle mass and has a tendency towards inhibiting muscle strength. But of course, what did you expect? This is a longevity drug. Unfortunately, I'm not done with uh, uh, not so good news. Metformin leads to significant reduction in testosterone levels, both in diabetic and non-diabetic men. Reduction of sex drive and induction of low testosterone-induced erectile dysfunction in the long run. So men, please be aware of this and make sure that all aspects of your well-being are taken care. So, and this aspect is taken care as well while you are on 